I work as a medical oncologist and I see a lot of uh, prostate cancer patients. And what I see is that during the course of this disease, and the effect of the every next treatment uh, tends to be less than the, than the previous treatment. I think it's very important that you know if, if, if you start a treatment, will the patient benefit from this treatment? So we know now that for, for uh, castration-resistant prostate cancer, uh, there are a lot of treatments available. Um, we have chemos, uh, two uh, texanes, uh, the dose taxel and the cabazi taxel. We have uh, the, the, the hormonal treatments, the enzalutamide, the abiraterone. Um, we now have the PARP inhibitors, uh, Olaparib. We have radium 223. So there is uh, something to choose. And you may think, well, I, I want them all in a, in a, uh, subsequently. But I think it's important to stop at the right uh, time. And the important question is, when is the right time? We looked up the, the, the scientific uh, literature and uh, we found that in, in the palliative setting, uh, I think that you, that you can have two treatments. The palliative treatments is usually uh, good. So a lot of people uh, benefit from, from the first and the second line treatment. And then after two treatments, um, yeah, probably you, you, you may choose not to uh, continue treatment. So what we did is uh, we looked in, in our registry um, of, of, of more than uh, 3,000 uh, patients at all the patients who were pro progressive on the second line treatment. They got castration resistant. They got a first line treatment, for example, chemotherapy. They got a second line treatment, for example, a next generation hormonal treatment. Um, then we looked at patients who were treated and who were not. We looked at um, uh, the outcomes of treatment. And what we saw was that there are some um, prognostic uh, factors every patient uh, has, and um, that the more uh, poor prognostic factors you had, the, the worse your, your prognosis was, of course, and the, the, the less the survival was. The best one had uh, excellent condition, no, no symptoms, uh, no uh, opo opioids, uh, painkillers, uh, good uh, lab values, and um, they, they had a very good prognosis. And um, I think those patients are typically patients for whom a third line of treatment is, is perfect. And we had uh, two intermediate uh, groups and then the poor prognosis group. Those were typical patients with a poor condition and they, uh, they, they had to be in bed for, for a half of the day or they had a visceral disease, liver meds or lung meds. Um, they, they had bad uh, blood uh, values, blood counts, uh, high LDH, uh, such, such features. And these patients, um, whether or not they were treated, they did uh, they did bad. They had a poor survival of only a couple of months, and we saw no difference in the patients who, who got treatment and who did not. So probably if you have a lot of poor prognostic features, it's better to stop treatment. Because if you, got treat, uh, you go for treatment, you will, will not benefit. Typically after two lines of treatment, um, I, uh, I reserve some time to discuss with the patient uh, where do you want to go? What is important for you in the, in the coming time? Um, what are your goals of treatment? Is it that you want to live as long as you can and you accept all the, uh, the, the toxicity and the, uh, and the treatment and, and, and you just want to go for it? Or is it more quality of life and you want to have a um, uh, rest in the last period of your life and you want to be with your, your family and your relatives? And I think that's important to, uh, to discuss that and to inform patients of, uh, of their situation and their chances of ben benefit of, of, uh, of a third line. It's more difficult as a man without testosterone to, uh, yeah, to stand for yourself. And, and, and it's, of course, difficult. You are the patient and your testosterone is low. So that makes it difficult. And sometimes man has to, has to cry um, uh, far more easy than they used to do and they feel ashamed uh, of uh, that they cry yeah and then and then they uh, how do you say it they they are silent i think a lot of patients 
they regret some decisions, especially in the last phase of life. I, uh, when you stop chemo, especially, uh, you can improve. Your condition can improve in the, in the first weeks. That's what I see. But usually the disease progresses. And so the symptoms of the disease, and it can be the fatigue and the, um, uh, the, 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 the change of taste and that you don't want to eat and, and the fatigue, that, that's, that's a very common problem. And it's not easy to, to, to treat. I mean, pain, we can treat with painkillers, but... Uh, or, or radiotherapy, or maybe radionuclides, but, but fatigue is difficult to treat. I, uh, I really encourage to, 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 to talk to your general practitioner uh, from that point. So when the decision is made, okay, um, no further treatment, best supportive care, go to your GP and discuss uh, the, 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 the palliative treatment, the symptom treatment in the last phase with your GP. You can also, of course, discuss that with the palliative care uh, uh, department or or your oncologist or or your GP and, and um, yeah and it will get worse that's that's true and 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 then you you you, you die.